Well, it's fall, and the mysterious and persistent disease continues to spread rapidly throughout the known world. Seems to affect most those dwelling in densely packed cities. The medical community offers various recommendations, but a lack of knowledge and anxiety hangs in the air. The body count rises by the day. The year is 1866 in London. After almost two decades of deadly cholera outbreaks around the world, and in the midst of a pandemic threatening his own city, once again, the prince of preachers, Charles Spurgeon, addresses his congregation. In his sermon, The Voice of Cholera, Spurgeon's booming voice echoes throughout the Metropolitan Tabernacle, and he hits on several points that are surprisingly relevant for us 160 years later. Let me just highlight a few for us. First, expect that in a crisis like this, people, even Christians, will respond in varied ways. Let me quote. There are different ways of looking at this disease. Men viewing it from one point of view alone have frequently despised those who have regarded it under another aspect. Occasionally, Christian men express themselves indignantly concerning those who speak of cholera as the product of ascertained and governable causes to be checked and even prevented by due attention to the laws of health. He goes on, so far from a Christian man being angry with those who instruct the people in useful secular knowledge, he ought rather to be thankful for them and hope that their teaching may be powerful with the masses. Secondly, you can receive and heed secular knowledge in order to love your neighbor. He says this, the gospel has no quarrel with ventilation. And the doctrines of grace have no dispute with disinfectant. We preach repentance and faith, but we do not denounce whitewash. Much as we advocate holiness, we always have a good word for cleanliness and sobriety. We would promote with all our hearts that which may honor God, but we cannot neglect that which may bless our neighbors, whom we desire to love even as ourselves. But third, and most importantly, our most important charge in these times is not to look to science or to politics. But our most important charge is to look to our sovereign God. Spurgeon said this, We believe that God sends all pestilences, all diseases. Let them come how they may. And that he sends them with a purpose. Let them be removed in whatever way they may, and we can see that it is our business as ministers of God to call the people's attention to God in the disease and teach them the lesson which God would have them learn. End quote. We have this portrait in our living room of a Spurgeon quote written out, and I think it's all the more helpful in a cons confusing time like this. It says, God is too good to be unkind. He is too wise to be mistaken. So when we cannot trace his hand, we must trust his heart. We must trust his heart. So even though we've really fallen in love with the word unprecedented in 2020, we got to remember that this pandemic is not the first one that has been experienced by God's people, and it likely won't be the last one. So in a time that can feel paralyzing, and it can feel like this is the first time anything like this has ever happened, the exhortation today is simple. Remember what's most important. Worship Jesus. Love one another. Seek the good of the cities. And that reminds us of our need to confess our sins. Would you pray with me? 
Father, we live in a world that can oftentimes feel obsessed with the science and the politics of this virus that we are now battling. And while there can be much good gleaned from these sources, too often we have forgotten you in the disease. We have not worshipped you with our whole minds, souls, bodies, strength. We have not loved our brothers and sisters in Christ as we would ourselves. And we have failed to consistently seek the good of the cities that you have sent us into. Father, we repent of these things. And we bring our individual sins to you now in the quiet of this moment. 